Hey out there. This is February 20th, 2016. And it's just almost at 9.30 in the morning here in Northern California. And uh, today I wanted to get into uh, current events. Um, I also wanted to point out some things I don't hear other people pointing out, which is really the main purpose of me doing this video blog. Because if there's people out there that are that have a better forum, a better venue for saying the things I believe need to be said, then I would leave it at that and just say, hey, listen to this person or that person. But when that isn't the case, then the only thing for a person to do is to speak out themselves and to point out some of the things they believe are important to point out that other people aren't pointing out. So, you know, back to the main reason why I bother doing this video blog. Because I care. Really, I'm selfish. And I want to be happy. And in order for me to be happy, I need other people to be happy. At least to understand what's entailed, what's required of finding happiness. And, uh, and I find that's very elusive in our invented reality, the reality that's been foisted upon us, that we didn't get a say in. And I like to point out how inundated humanity is by the lies and the deceit that's being perpetrated by these monsters that create the policies that we have to live under. And how too often we tend to blame one another and nitpick and get into small-minded, narrow-minded arguments when this is exactly where these monsters running our lives want us. They want us at each other's throats and bickering about things that don't matter. And this is where this whole political theater comes in. Uh, most recently, we've got this thing with Donald Trump and the Pope. The Pope uh, is slamming the Donald or people that think like him, his ideology, that, you know, this wall is immoral, basically, that, you know, we should be building bridges to other nations, not walls. Now, this in light of the fact that the Pope at the Vatican has some of the you know, it's, it's a walled-off fortress, basically. And, uh, you know, a lot of security in terms of, you know, physical security. So, really, you know, to hear this kind of thing come up from the Pope is the, the epitome of hypocrisy, you know. And uh, although I think the wall is not the right approach, I think, really, if we just took away the incentives it uh, would make all the difference in the world. And coupled with taking away the incentives, the thing to do is to breathe down the necks of these the rulers of Mexico and any, any nation south of the border that, you know, have perpetual problems that they can't seem to fix. I mean, it's basically the same thing America's had going on for my whole life, at least, since the coup d'etat of 1963, the assassination of JFK and and the uh, installment of unsound currency. Well, it started before that, but what I'm saying is they dashed the hopes to have sound currency at that time because that's what JFK was doing that was so controversial, was uh, bringing in this sound currency. These federal, they were a silver note, silver certificates, um, and they were <clears throat> to supplant the um, Federal Reserve notes. But anyhow, what America's had going on is the, the loss of our standard of living through unsound currency. It's just this, uh, this gradual, uh, you know, weeding out of the middle class. And they're not going up from the middle class, they're going down. So what we've got is an increase in poverty, an increase in the income and wealth disparity. And, you know, we're going the way of these nations to the south of us because of this. It's all very simple to understand. I've pointed out repeatedly in my videos the, the principles of supply and demand. 
and the reasons why your currency is to increase in value if we're making any economic progress for the public at large because I don't appeal to any special interest group I care about people just regular people not just in America but all over the world but as an American I believe we should, just as every person from any nation, be patriotic and say our country should set the example. At one time, Argentina was the wealthiest country in the world. You know, you rich as an Argentinian. So other nations have found ways to bring prosperity to the people at large. That's the public at large. And not leave people out of the loop of prosperity because people can't be free. People know that instinctively. They can't be free unless they have financial security. These things are part and parcel. They go together. Uh, you will feel oppressed, okay, if you don't have financial security. And nobody that feels oppressed feels free. It's all very, very simple. <clears throat> but the reason that your currency is supposed to increase in worth under supply and demand, free market, capitalism, involving risk and competition, is because we consistently, we, I say we, as a society, as a civilization, consistently supply more than we demand. And there's only one direction price for commodities should go under that circumstance, and that is down. And when your cost of living is in perpetual decline, the worth of your currency simultaneously is in constant increase. So the worth of your currency increases, just like a scale. Okay, cost of living goes down, worth of your currency goes up. It's all a very simple mathematical principle. And it is, it's a natural law. So a natural economic uh, situation, basically that's what capitalism is. We're just talking about natural economic forces, supply and demand, free market, all these things are very natural. It becomes like a game that everybody has a stake in. Everybody's got a level playing field. They have a fair shake. And it's, it's easy. It's conducive to prosperity. It's conducive to not just prosperity for some, but prosperity for all. And again, the way it happens is not through wage increases. It's not through an increase in numbers so much as it's just an increase of the worth of your current income. whatever, However meager that is, if you can see your currency go up in worth every day, you understand you know, where this thing leads and how it gets there. Where everybody's got so much access to so much stuff, okay, we don't care. Because you know, remember, you've got to take care of stuff or you've got to convince other people to take care of your stuff. Or you could share stuff. I mean, do we all need a giant yacht, okay? No, because it's a lot of maintenance. So we share a yacht, which would make sense, and there's plenty of them. So anytime anybody wants to use one or, you know, take a cruise, whatever the case may be, you know, this is what I'm saying here is that the same with housing, with anything, you know, not just the necessities of life, because housing is a necessity, but with luxury items, we could have plenty, plenty of everything, plenty of the nicest automobiles everybody wants. What, what automobile do you want to drive today? We could have central clearing houses for these things. As simple as that. Any day you want to change careers, any t day, it, you're not beholden anybody but yourself. That's the reality that we could attain if we just tapped into the wherewithal that God put within the human being. We have unlimited potential. We're created like God, like little gods. So we're, we are supposed to create heaven on earth. We are God's hands and feet, eyes and ears on the ground, all of us. This is not a religious principle. This is just a reality principle. This is just an understanding and an acknowledgement that an almighty creator God made this planet, created all life on it, and we owe all credit, all glory to God alone. Okay, that's it. And our only homage is to God. Okay, this is the only one we really should have to defer to. And the way that it's done is not is through conscience, really. It's not that God is going to, you know, waiting there to discipline us. But, you know, that is what, what happens. I mean, when we do wrong in life, we feel the guilt, and that's the way God disciplines us. He makes us feel unhappy because nobody that's feeling guilty feels happy. So that's the discipline of God. And it is written in the Bible that all those that he accepts, and that's into his kingdom, 
into you know the coming kingdom of heaven on earth, really, because that is what's going to be a whole lot different than it is now, when you know money doesn't exist. Okay, let's we're going to have to figure this out, and we have the ability to do that. But remember, all those he accepts, he disciplines, and this is right, just like a parent would. It doesn't say he punishes them. This is discipline. This is for our own good, for our own growth, for our own evolution. God does these things. So anyhow, um, you know, about the Pope, you know, who I believe is the Antichrist, because if there was one man anybody could point to and say, well, this is a substitute for Jesus Christ. That's why so many people in these, you know, in the, uh, the Latin nations south of America, you know, they've put so much stock in this idea that, you know, this is it. They believe this. They believe that, you know, this Pope is, you know, the representation, the exemplification of Jesus Christ. But really, if you look at, you know, the men's lifestyles, you'll see they're, you know, they couldn't be further from apart, further apart. I mean, you know, Jesus being a lowly carpenter that had to work for his daily bread was out there building houses. Uh, and, uh, and what is the Pope doing? You know, he's just telling everybody else what they ought to do. And especially in America, what's so bizarre and ironic is that so many people claim that they really, you know, they really value the separation of church and state but we got these people i wouldn't even call it liberal these people are just you know fascist really so many people in the mainstream media today are just suck up sycophants scared serving out of fear fear driven uh you know their own job security depends on pleasing their masters whoever that might be and reading the scripts they're handed doing what they're told not doing what they're told not to do okay this is being dictated to so many of these people so they don't have free will. But it was on, uh, I was watching NBC, and who was it? Katie Kerr, I think, came up with a statement referring to the Pope as the Holy Father. And, you know, if she knew the Bible, if she knew the teachings of Jesus, she would know that Jesus clearly said, call no man father except he who is in heaven. See, this battle about, you know, who's the father and who isn't has been going on for a, lo a long time. Okay, and the Pope is not my father. Okay, I have one father as we all do, and God is our father. Uh, last week when I mentioned that it's our prerogative to be every man's friend, I meant that. And, you know, after refreshing my understanding of this term prerogative, I always understood it to mean it's your choice, you know, that that's all. Basically, a prerogative is a choice. But the definition, I, I do think they're fiddling with our language. I really do. I think they're trying to change it, manipulate it, keep us in confusion. Because if people start having a meeting of the minds as to exact, precise interpretations of words, there's much more chance we'll become empowered and unify and forget all this garbage, this divisive garbage is you know you a conservative you a liberal you a communist you a capitalist you're a democrat you're a republican all this divisive stuff is invented to keep us at each other's throats to make sure we don't unify and start solving problems but this word prerogative talked about an exclusive right well i didn't mean it like that except maybe in the sense that it's exclusive to humanity because you are special because that's the only people listening to my videos i know are human beings made in the image and likeness of God brothers and sisters equal we are equal because we are equally loved we are and so that's as you know that's what's really important it's not well we're equal of value I mean we're equal in value because we're equally loved if we were if, if God had different values upon human beings then he wouldn't love us equally would he He'd say well this one's more valuable so I love this one more right no that's what human beings do we believe in inequality and, that, you know, we've got all these problems because people have this, this mini elitist complex. They think somehow they're just more special than somebody else. And I don't believe they're in their right mind. I really think if when you're in your right mind fully, you don't want to be better than anybody else. You just want to be equal. You want, you want equality.